pray together. Father, I like the appeal of that peace. Let's be joyful. Why shouldn't we be joyful? This is your house. This is your day. And we are here in family. Over the next few moments as we reflect together about the meaning of that experience. Be in our midst. Stir up our minds. Hide the noises. Just hush our hearts. May we hear you in Scripture. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So two Sabbaths ago, we found God in MySpace. Then last Sabbath, sure enough, there he is in Facebook. And I hope you're not surprised that today he shows up in YouTube. Why wouldn't he show up in YouTube? Everybody else shows up in YouTube, like Judson Lapley. You heard of him? Judson Lapley? I hadn't heard of him either until I came across this piece uh, uploaded to the web just this week, written by a sophomore at Duke University, a young man named David Distenfeld, titled the essay, You Too Can YouTube, but seriously, here we go. Judson Lapley is my personal hero. Sure, he's no New York City firefighter, but he's a hero nonetheless. You probably don't recognize his name, but I'm sure everyone reading this has seen his work. Judson is the star of the most viewed video on YouTube. How many views does he have, you ask? Well, to indicate the staggering enormity of this number, I will activate my keyboard's caps lock feature and give it to you. And before I give you the number, I need to just say a word about YouTube. There may be some people here, it is possible, who have not heard of YouTube. Let, let me just tell you what YouTube is. YouTube is a site in cyberspace run by Google that is available to any human being that has the ego strength to put a video camera in front of himself, push the record button, and do anything you want, and then upload it to YouTube. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. You can be as nutty as a squirrel and end up on YouTube, which is probably what you are when you do. You can take pictures of squirrels. You can take pictures of your pets. You can take pictures of your babies, some of the hottest. By the way, if you ever, this is, this is just a little pastoral counsel, if you're ever going through a day and you are really bummed out, you're just feeling awful, go onto YouTube and then type in laughing babies. Just type in laughing babies. You will leave on cloud nine. You will be the happiest person on earth when that little baby is through. So anyway, you can do that. You can put news clippings. It's the most, it is the most frequented video swap shop in the universe. All right, so that's where Judson Lapley shows up. How many people have visited Judson Lapley? He's only recorded one video in his life. And he ended up on YouTube. To indicate, let me repeat that sentence, to indicate the staggering enormity of this number, I will now activate my keyboard's caps lock feature. The number of viewers for Judson Lapley, 81,697,004. 81.7 million people have met Justin Lapley. Look at if Justin is on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, God has to be there. The question is, are you too on his YouTube? And I need to plunge into this Word of God with you this morning. God's YouTube invitation. God's YouTube U2 invitation. Open your Bible, please, to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. We are as unknown as Judson Lapley, perhaps, but here is a line from Holy Scripture that shifts the paradigm. This is God's YouTube U2 invitation. By the way, if you didn't bring a Bible, grab the Pew Bible in front of you. Hebrews, that would be in the New Testament. Let me give you a page number for that. That would be page 809. Hebrews chapter 10, just two lines from ancient Scripture. You and I have never been to these two lines together before, but the time is right. Hebrews chapter 10, I'll be in the New King James Version, and it's just two verses, verses 24 and 25. Let's go. All right, verse 24. And let us consider one another... 
in order to stir up love and good works. Not, there's verse, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day. That is capital D, as you see the capital D day approaching. You're saying, hey Dwight, I don't say anything about YouTube in this whole passage. I want to tell you something, my friend. It has YouTube written all over it. And if you just put a few little sketches on that uh, study guide of yours, you'll see it too. So take out your study guide and your worship bulletin today. Let's, let's just cut to the chase. Study guide is in your worship bulletin. Visitors, if you came in and you, didn't, and you didn't get a study guide, just hold your hand up. Our friendly ushers will make sure that you get one right now, all the way to the back and in the balcony, please. And those of you watching on television, we're delighted you're joining us for this series. Let me give you our website, put it on the screen for you, www.pmchurch.tv. That's our website. You, you uh, type in that website. You're looking for a series, a little series called God's Party. That's the series. It's a little five-parter. This is part three. We have only two more. And oh, by the way, don't miss Green Google. Don't miss Green Google next weekend, all right? But today is YouTube U2. That's what you're looking for under God's party, YouTube U2. And right there it'll say, uh, it'll say study guide. Click there and you will have the identical study guide with the answers, by the way, those of you watching, with the answers at the bottom. So let's go. Huh? Everybody have one? All right, first line in our study guide today. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 is God's strongest YouTube, YouTube invitation. Write that in, please. Invitation. This is the strongest, bar none, invitation in anywhere in Holy Scripture, as we're going to note in just a moment. Keep your pen moving. The motto of Google's YouTube, this is their, this is their motto, broadcast yourself. All right? But the motto of God's YouTube is bring yourself. Bring yourself. What's that supposed to mean? Let's take a closer look at this, uh, these little, this little two-liner that we just read together. Let's read it again. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Now, listen, guys. There is a single Greek word that unlocks that entire line. It's a lot of words in the English, assembling ourselves together. All of that can be captured in one Greek word. In fact, jot this down, will you? See it there in the study guide? Here's the one word, episunagoge. Now, epi means at, and sunagoge means gathering together. I want you to look at that word, sunagoge. Can you see an English word that comes out of sunagoge? What would it be, huh? Synagogue, you got it. Write it down, synagogue. Clearly, jot this down, this word describes a gathering together for worship. That's what you do in a synagogue. So this has to be talking about weekly worship. Now I need to remind you, in case you have forgotten, that in the New Testament, Jews and Christians often worshiped in the very same place, always on the very same day, in the New Testament. In fact, let me show you this. Let's just go back to the story of the New Testament church in the book of Acts. Put, put your ribbon right there in uh, Hebrews 10. We'll be right back. But Acts chapter 13. I'll give you just a, a line or two from this history that will show you that, in fact, they're there. Same place, same day. All right, this is Acts chapter 13. So Paul and Barnabas, John Mark has cut and run, and uh, Paul and Barnabas are staying together. This is a, what they called Paul's first missionary journey. And verse 14, when they departed from Perga, Paul and Barnabas, they came to Antioch and Pisidia, and they went, in, went into where? They went into the synagogue on what day of the week? On the Sabbath day, and they sat down. And obviously, the ruler of the synagogue uh, spots these two gentlemen. And any time uh, strangers showed up, if they looked like they were educated, the word would uh, go back to them. As one of the ushers took it back to Paul and Barnabas, do either of you have something to say? And Paul was hoping for that open door, and he jumps to his feet. And Paul preaches from verse 16 all the way down to verse 41. All right? As soon as the sermon is over, notice the next line. Verse 42. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them. When? Be preached to them the next Sabbath. Oh, all right. So that's just going to be a few Jews who get together the next Sabbath? No, drop down to verse 44. And on the next Sabbath, almost the whole 